All right, another episode of Lifetime Talks. I'm Jamie Martin. And I'm David Freeman. And we are here with our friend Danny King. He is going to be talking with us about cold recovery. Danny is a master trainer at Lifetime, as well as the national manager of personal training experience. And he's been working with clients for more than 15 years. Danny, okay. thanks for coming back. Thanks so much for having me back. Super excited. Yeah. All right, let's dive in. What is cold recovery? <laughs> and why should we do it? Right, yeah. Well, um... I mean, I guess it's a it's a popular topic now, and we we want to talk about cold recovery as a as a big general thing, right? And we think of it that could be cold plunge, that could be icing, that could be things like cryotherapy, right? There's a lot of stuff in this broad topic. All of it fits in in kind of this umbrella, but there are some unique advantages to each one of those, right? So the simplest way is it's obviously applying cold to the body somewhere. Um, again, that could be one location, right, an elbow eye of pain, you've maybe heard to ice it, mm -hmm. and now you're seeing a lot more people, and it's getting a lot more popular, someone might actually do a full, like, cold water immersion, right, where they, they mm -hmm. kind of sink in the cold, and they're going to hang out there for a while, and, um, you know, try to get those benefits. So that's really big, I guess, globally what it is. Um, most people are doing it from a pain relief standpoint, um, and the main property, I guess, that you'd say it works on is it's, it's, it's really anti-inflammatory. So cold, uh, really shuttles uh, uh, fluid out, right? So blood and inflammation out, uh, which helps to really shut down that inflammatory process. So if you are in current pain, it can work great to block it. it it's a little painful at times, <laughs> but it, it does work really well to do it. So that's, I guess, the big kind of overview of where we're going. When you think about that, a lot of times we look at the physical mm -hmm. uh, benefits from it. When we go a little bit deeper, mm -hmm. it's a mental piece to it as well. So that was a lot as far as pain relief, how mm -hmm. I can recover quicker. What have you seen or heard when it comes to the mental side of it? Yeah, there's, there's a lot there, especially when we start to think about something like uh, cold water immersion. We're mm -hmm. getting in and we're going to stay there for a little bit uh, for a while. You can see everything from in the really short term mental, you're going to get a great dopamine release, especially mm -hmm. when you get out. So you just actually come out with a bit of a feeling of euphoria. Mm -hmm. You feel good. Um, that's actually, if you look at something, cryotherapy, it's the primary thing it's doing. Just that quick flip makes you feel good when you walk out. It makes you feel like you're doing something. There's also, though, this whole side of mental toughness and the fact that, you know, everything in your body is telling you to get out of the water, get away from the cold, and fighting that discomfort seems to have a real uh, benefit for a lot of people in that idea of mental toughness or being more comfortable pushing through uh, adversi adversity or something like that. It can really help in that category for people. I want to take a statement, a quote from Wim Hof. So everybody oh, yeah. knows Wim Hof as far as, you know, the ice man. And he ended up saying, in the absence of environmental stress, the things we have built to make our lives easier have actually made us weaker. What's that mean to you? Oh, man, that's uh, one great, great quote in yeah. general. Wim Hof is, is great. Um, you know, I think there's a, a, a whole book on this idea of being, you know, anti-fragile or some of these things. And it is. Things have gotten probably too easy over time for a lot of people. And so when you get some level of discomfort, you just don't know how to respond. Mm -hmm. And so your threshold for that, you know, hey, I, I can't get the treadmill I want in the gym, right? It has the right view. Mm -hmm. I like it. That's my treadmill. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's the hardest thing in, in your day, potentially. It, it can throw us off a little bit, whereas we start to get better at fighting through some of that, it can make everything in life just a little bit easier. And cold is definitely one of those things that does that. Love it. Yeah. Okay. How cold? How cold is cold yeah. for cold therapy? Colder than most people want, <laughs> unfortunately. <laughs> Th this is one of those things that in order for it to work well, it does need to be pretty uncomfortable. So, um, you know, a cold plunge, usually you're going to see temperatures from uh, just above freezing. So you're looking at, you know, 45 degrees to maybe up into the 60-ish degree area. When you get above that, it's probably just not quite cold enough. What you actually want to do, most of the research when you look at the pain relief, the inflammation side of it, um, it it needs to swing the tissue temp about 10 degrees. Mm -hmm. So if you're too high, it's just going to take too long or it's not going to work quite as well to get that tissue swing, right? So we need it down there in those colder temps. Coaching, I think, I think a lot of times individuals now are hearing what it is that we're saying. How would you coach someone to get into this as far as building the tolerance for it? Mm -hmm. What would you say there? Um, s start slow, okay. you know. So uh, if you're lucky enough to have access, let's go again, this idea of cold plunge, right? So if you're lucky enough to have access to something like that, um, 
try a couple, you know, if, if you can control the temp that are a little warmer just to get used to it. Uh, if not, then just do part of your body, right? So only legs or up to hips. Um, and you really don't need a lot of time right away. So even a minute or two, you know, waste in is going to have some great benefit uh, because it is, again, this, this mental side and it's a system based thing. Your blood is pumping through your body. So even if you only have your legs in, that is having a cooling effect on, on the body, right? It's not going to maybe help a shoulder feel better, but you are going to still get a lot of the whole body system benefit. Got it. Okay. So you've talked about pain relief, mm -hmm. but I know that at Lifetime specifically, we're talking about this a lot in the terms of recovery. Yep. So talk to us a little bit about that and who is it for in that case? Yeah. And, and that's that's great because there's actually been two really big uh, meta analysis. So meta analysis is when they take a bunch of studies on a topic and they look at how it performs overall. So you say, hey, this study says this, this study says this. They look at the whole kind of research that this helps in that, in that world. And one came out about a year ago that said that cold recovery can actually interfere with muscle gain. Mm. And so all of a sudden there's all these articles, don't do it, it's not great. There's another one that came out, honestly, I think like three weeks ago. Uh, so so right, hot off right. the press, right, for this, that said that cold recovery works great from an exercise recovery and uh, especially for strength or endurance sport. Mm. So one thing to look at is there does seem to be some timing things in there. So when we think of, hey, what's your goal? The more health focused you are or the more performance focused you are, the more it's probably going to help because it's going to, again, uh, shut down some of that inflammation. It's going to help your muscles start, kickstart that process of recovery. Mm -hmm. The more you're looking at purely aesthetics, you're looking for muscle growth, mu muscle hypertrophy, the more you want to be at least cautious about when you're doing it. And they were looking at it directly post-exercise, where you might just want to spread it out a little bit more so we don't maybe shut down some of those signals. Got it. But in general, uh, especially if you're, if you're trying to increase the amount or the frequency you're exercising, it can be great in between those bouts of exercise to, again, help accelerate that recovery. Because what it's doing is it's pushing uh, all the blood out. And then as soon as you step out, blood pulls in, right? So we pull it in. So we're increasing the frequency of nutrient we're getting to the muscles and again, shuttling that inflammation out. So it can really help in between bouts. Nice. I will say that we've been going through a lot over these past few years when it comes to mood and mindset mm -hmm. once again. And a lot of things can be associated to depression when it comes to cold. And I think people are associating the cold, but it's really lack of light. So when we talk about how mood can now be influenced in a positive way, when it comes to cold recovery, what, what do you know in that space? I mean, I think you hit it really well there that the, the cold in itself isn't necessarily a problem. And actually the ability to switch between temperatures does mm. seem to have a big effect on people in a good way. Uh, in that same kind of vein, when you, we talked earlier about the idea of uh, um, you know, discomfort and all those things, is there's some interesting research that the more your temperature swings, there's some benefit to sleep and a bunch of other things in your life. And most of us actually get to live in a really temp controlled environment. Even when we're here in Minnesota and it's cold out, we can spend most of our time in a hot car, coming from a garage to a, mm -hmm. you know, it, I'm always at 72 degrees. Mm -hmm. So there really does seem to be something to having that variation to help your brain and to just help your overall well being. Awesome. So you mentioned sleep there for a second. I want to touch on metabolism because mm -hmm. I know there's been some stats yeah. around that as yeah. well cold plunge, whatever yeah. for yeah. that. Yeah, I've seen, uh, I, I think the probably most commonly cited study saw like a 16% increase in mm -hmm. metabolism, which is, is pretty wild. If you think the average person uh, burns 2000 calories, you know, 16% of that is a significant portion, 200 calories. That's a workout. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's truly the act of the body physically trying to warm itself up. There is a shivering effect. Mm -hmm. There is this effect of trying to hold that, that pin. And again, that happens at those colder temps, the body has to work really hard to try to get back up and generate heat because it doesn't like being down there. Mm -hmm. And it does seem to have that type of an effect. So uh, there is a real metabolism boosting benefit to it. Okay. I just want to make sure we touch on who is this not for and who should be cautious about trying cold mm -hmm. therapy? Yeah. Well, I mentioned at least timing of it. If your goals are really purely in that muscle growth standpoint, uh, mm -hmm. keep it as far from your workouts as you can and maybe look at when you're bringing it in and, and, and when you're doing it. The other category probably I would, I would, you know, put in that realm is a newer exerciser. Mm -hmm. And I, I hesitate when I say that because everybody has a journey and a path in, but when the act of showing up 
to the to the gym or showing up and working out is is intimidating mm -hmm. saying hey i also need you to do something that's incredibly physically discomfort you know uncomfortable yeah. might not be you know might not be great so that would be the main category there's not a lot of of other really contraindications right there's 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 no major there's hey you know anyone with any major things high blood pressure high cholesterol heart disease talk to your doctor first right when mm -hmm. we're putting stress on the body but it's not necessarily inherently going to be uh, absolute hard no for those things. Got it. I want to say based off of the conversation we had prior to jumping on is for individuals who might have a little bit of resistance to doing this. Mm -hmm. uh, you shared a little bit about your personal experience <laughs> and, and I want I want you to walk some of our listeners through how granted it was something that was uneasy at first mm -hmm. how you still were able to eventually get to the point of getting yourself into yeah. the cold water can you, can I, you take I us thought we were kind of the trust tree I <laughs> that, that I'm really bad at it, uh, it personally and I thought I'd be good I'm from Minnesota yeah. I exercise yeah. in the cold I love to cross-country ski I run outside uh, but my first experience when I got in first thing I did is tip my sit my toe in really quick and that was a terrible idea because it, it you know you got to feel it right so you kind of just gotta go for it and I did I started with you know up to the knees and just breathe through it yep. right and it, it is if, if if you know someone needs it to look at look into Wim Hof's work talking mm -hmm. about that idea of breathing and uh, you know sending these signals that you are okay and just slowly started to work myself in luckily I had a uh, there was a coworker of mine in the tub at the time who was way more comfortable with it than I was which made me kind of you know get to that point of like all right I got to get over this and get in but yeah. it, it wasn't easy mm -hmm. I again I thought I'd be pretty good at it and it took quite a bit before I got to a point of uh, relative comfort right, right. where I could get in and do it without looking like I was in full panic mode <laughs> Uh, I get in full panic mode if my shower gets cold. Yeah. So I have some work to do. I know you talked, David, earlier about that you had done yeah. that as well. You, you know, the interesting thing, though, that I'll say is it's it's really different. And shower is hard because once you get, again, spoiled with a real cold yeah. plunge, um, the, the shower, because you got to get in there and you're trying to move around and, yeah. and, and yeah. do think It's just, it's actually worse for me than than just kind of getting it submerged and, and deal with it actually yeah. seems to be easier for me, at least. Uh, well, I know we have to wrap it up. I want to ask mm -hmm. one question. If I'm yeah. going to do a cold plunge, how long do I have to stay in for? Is it up to you? It's a little bit. I, I wouldn't go longer than 10 minutes. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, and really, honestly, you start to see benefit at about two minutes. So two to 10 minute. Uh, it is probably a good idea to work that tolerance up a little bit in, into at least probably, I'd say, those five minute ranges. Um, but past that really five-ish minute point, it's kind of up to you and what the goals are. You've got a lot of the in inflammatory benefits or anti-inflammatory benefits. Now you're looking at some of the mental toughness and other mm -hmm. things with that longer hold. All right, David, anything else? No, I think that was a cold one for us. <laughs> it was cold. <laughs> Danny, thank you for coming on yeah, again. Thank you both.